Hello. In this video, we are going to model the body centered cubic BCC 110 plane. Recall that for the BCC 100 plane, which is equivalent to this top face here, that it is a square. It has fourfold rotational symmetry, so it has a C4. And we know that the distance between atoms here is that edge length A. We can exactly model this particular surface with Lego by using a distance of 4 for A. So we're able to do that and we're able to replicate the right angles um, of the square as well. So this is the 100 phase. We can see the 110 phase highlighted with these orange lines here. So if we cut uh, along the blue line here, this particular edge, and then come along the diagonal, the orange, and terminate here, this particular plane, which we're shown in a top view here, this is the 110 plane for body-centered cubic. And it has several important features. The first important feature that we recognize is that it has an atom in the center. So not only do we have a rectangular shape here, and we'll get its exact dimensions in a second, but exactly in the center of this rectangle, we have an atom of exactly the same type that is at the vertex. So we know that this particular distance here is A because we have a cube. So this distance has to be A as well. We know that along this diagonal, because we have a square, this length of the orange line is going to be square root of 2 times that. So we see that the general dimensions of the 110 plane for the body-centered cubic bears a strong resemblance to the 110 plane for simple cubic in its dimensions, except that the simple cubic 110 plane does not have this atom in the center. So that is an immediate point of how we can distinguish body center cubic 110 from simple cubic 110. We recall that the square root of 2 has a value of 1.414, which is approximately equal to 1.5. Again, we can use our approximation that uh, one half, I mean one and a half, 1.5, is approximately equal to the square root of 2. So we can again make this length a length of 6 studs times 4. And this 4 by 6 isn't exactly, but it's within 10% of the exact uh, dimensions of the 110 face where we have one side A and then the long side of the rectangle has a length of square root of 2 times A. With this central atom at the center of the rectangular cell, which we didn't have before, now we have a couple different ways that we can describe this particular surface structure. Now recall that for the 100 phase, we had this fourfold symmetry. For the 110 phase, because it's a rectangular, now we have a C2 symmetry. So we have C2 rotational axis that way. Um, we have various different C2s, but um, we have C2s at the center and at the vertices. Now we notice that we can think of the unit cell as a rectangle with an additional atom in the center. So we can call that a centered rectangular cell. But we can also redefine our unit cell in such a way that the cell is primitive. So the way that we do that is that we can connect these particular atoms. Now we have a shape that is rhombohedral. We have a rhombus. Um, and another feature of this particular rhombus is that it has no atoms other than at the vertices. So this is a primitive unit cell rhombohedral. So that we can see that for the body-centered cubic 110 phase, we can think of it as a centered rectangular cell, or we can think of it as a primitive rhombohedral cell. If we replace the central atom in the body with an atom of a different type, of a different element, then we have the cesium chloride 
110 structure. So an interesting feature of body center cubic 110 is that we have this particular arrangement, all at exactly the same height, and the atoms at the corners and at the center are identical. In the cesium chloride, the atoms at the corners will be of one type, whereas those at the center will be of a different type. Both atoms are essentially equivalent in the sense that if we swap the identities of all the atoms from one element to another, we have exactly the same cesium chloride structure. You just rename the, the atoms. So uh, this is the first structure that we've seen that at the actual surface, the cesium chloride 110, it will actually be um, bi-elemental. It have two different elements, both on the surface and both with 50% uh, coverage. So we'll see that with the Lego structure, we'll be able to see this more clearly, what the uh, cesium chloride 110 structure actually looks like. It looks kind of cool. Here we have the body-centered cubic 110 surface, along with figure 5, which shows us the dimensions of the unit cells. We see, for example, up here that the width of the rectangle is A, the edge length A. The height of the rectangle is the square root of 2 times A. And we're approximating that in LEGO by essentially a 1.5 uh, times A instead of the square root of 2, and that gives us dimensions of A being 4 studs across and the long length of the rectangle being 6 studs. Now, using a 4 by 6 dimensions means that the atom in the center can, will line up perfectly with one of the studs because now we have a dimension of come down 3 studs in, in this direction and go over by 2. Here we show 5 carbon monoxide molecules using a code of black for the carbon atom and oxygen, a red for the oxygen atoms. And here we highlight one way of thinking about what a unit cell is. We can see the vertices. We have a carbon monoxide at each. And we also have one in the center of this rectangular shape. So that's how we can think of it as a centered rectangle. Now, let's move one of the carbon monoxides over to here. Okay, and let's remove this one here. And now we have a new way of thinking about the unit cell. The unit cell is a quadrilateral with the carbon monoxide atoms demonstrating where the vertices are. And we notice that with this rhombohedral unit cell, since there are no atoms in the middle, this is a primitive cell. We can use the paper figures and copies of them to verify the symmetry operations of this particular surface. So we see that if we have a copy of figure five on top, and we notice that if we take this figure, that the holes line up with atoms in the surface. And then if we take this and start at the central point here and rotate by 180 degrees, but again, every atom in the lattice lines up. This tells us that we have a 180 degree rotation, a two-fold C tube operation with this particular surface. On the other hand, if we start with the figure lined up perfectly and again start at the center, but now we try to rotate by just 90 degrees. By 90 degrees, okay, get this around there. We see now that other than the central atom, none of the atoms line up. So that tells us that a C4, a 90 degree rotation, is not a symmetry operation for body centered cubic 110, even though it was a symmetry operation for body centered cubic 100. Now, if we look within one rectangular unit cell 
and we go in and replace the metal atom with an atom of a different element entirely, we now have the cesium chloride structure. So systematically go through and replace the central atom here to give us the cesium chloride 110 structure. And here we have nine complete unit cells for the cesium chloride 110. And if we put the paper figure over top of it, we now notice that at the vertices we have one type of atom, which is the gold color, while at the center we have a different element. So this is the cesium chloride 110 structure with the blue element in the center of the rectangle and the other element at the vertices. Now we notice that if we shift by A to the left, as we did before, the holes line up with the proper elements as they did before. So we have translational symmetry, a uh, translational symmetry of a distance A in the X direction. And as before, if we go up the distance square root of two times A in this direction, everything will line up. Okay, you know that that's true. Now we notice that if we shift by A to the left, as we did before, the holes line up with the proper elements as they did before. So we have translational symmetry, a uh, translational symmetry of a distance A in the X direction. And as before, if we go up the distance square root of 2 times a in this direction, everything will line up. Okay, we know that that's true. Another interesting thing to see is what happens if we shift both in the x and the y direction. Essentially, we want to move this hole from here to there. So we want to go up diagonally. And we notice that what we've done just by shifting our frame of reference is we still have the cesium chloride 110 structure, but now it seems that the rectangle has blue at the corners and gold in the center, which is, shows us that uh, if we replace one with the other, we replace blue by gold and gold by blue, we have not changed anything at all. We also see that if we shift uh, up and to the right, we still have the same structure, but we've flipped the identities of the atoms that we were saying for the unit cell were at the corners or in the center. Again, reminding us that we are free to define the unit cell any way we like. It just turns out that certain assignments of unit cells are just more convenient than others. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.